Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me as you do. Okay, all right, so I posted something very simple on my Facebook page, which was this little thing here, and basically, it's a 3D object that I created inside Corral Video Studio, and that's pretty cool. Now, I've got to tell you, it is very limited, but if you want to create very basic 3D objects, stick around, and I will show you how to start. I'm not going to recreate this. I'm just going to teach you how to start to create your very own. 3D object. So I have just placed here a solid black background and I'm going to apply the Boris FX filter like so. And I'm going to go into Customs Filter. Now this is popping up on a second screen and then I have to drag that over. I've got two screens here. Yeah, I'm that awesome. All right. So um, now there is a little bit of an issue here. We need to create 3D objects and then put that inside a 3D container. Now the problem is the 3D container that the the track gives you doesn't actually work as a 3D container. Why, I don't know, but there is a way to fix that. What we need to do is convert it to container, which is here, but it's grayed out. And I'll show you how we can fix all that. All right, so first thing we need to do, we need to create a 3D a container. So leave the text track in there and just type anything. And I don't really care what it is, an F or one or whatever it is. And then we're gonna change that into an object and the way we do that is we go to 3D extrusion. We see it as a letter F but Boris sees it as an object. Now if we change that, so if we change that to a container, it actually changes to a 3D container. Like so, see, now we have here a 3D container. Now we can leave the F in there or we can delete it. Now because it's just a container, I don't need any objects inside there like the F. Now I'm going to add my object. So I'm going to use spline primitive. And you'll see here rectangle. And again, I need to change this to an extrusion. We need to do everything as an extrusion. Otherwise, it's not an object. And I'm going to add one more, like so. And again, change it to an extrusion. And I'm in the silhouette. I can then change it to any object that I want. So I might change it to oval. And also, if you're in the oval, you have all these like materials, your bump map and textures and everything. You can change the look and feel of the object. So you can create your very own objects uh, like I did uh, in the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna go back into the container part here, which is my global commands. And I'm gonna rotate it ever so slightly because I wanna actually see where that rectangle is. Now you might just see it peeking through. So what we're gonna do is just ever so slightly bring that container forward. So I'm going to highlight this container here, and I'm going to go to my Z axis. Now to, to move it ever so slightly, if I use the slider, it's very sensitive, and I'm, I'm about to, I'm bound to overshoot. So I'm just going to click on here once, and I'm going to use my mouse wheel. And as you can see, my mouse wheel also increases the numbers and decreases the numbers. So I think here, because we rotate it one way, we need to decrease the numbers. And you can see it coming through like so. Okay, so depending on what you are creating, maybe this is all you want and then you want to put your word or your name on there, that is fine. So now if I go back into the 3D container and I move this object, you'll see that it is now bonded. It, is, it has become one object. So there you go. And this is how we are able to create 3D objects within Corel Video Studio. So it really is up to your imagination what you can come up with. But we are limited like we don't have a vast resource to create 3d objects but again it's something pretty cool that thinking about it it's a video editor that can create 3d objects now uh, we're basically done here with the uh, tutorial so you can leave me from here but if you do want to see why the 3d the other 3d container doesn't work and i'll show you what happens let's go back into uh, the spline primitive and then we we add a new container as well. So we have the new container here. So technically, let's uh, add these into the container itself, like so. So now they're inside it. So they're nested inside this 3D container. So by theory, if I did the exact same thing that I had done before, and uh, I'm gonna change this to an oval as well, all right, so here we are. It looks really good. It looks, it looks exactly the same. Let's do the same thing. Let's rotate it ever so slightly. And you're going, dude, I see no difference. Well, watch what happens when I tumble it on the X axis. 
you'll see that the top layer doesn't bond. It starts, see how it goes now off the oval. You can clearly see here that it's going off the oval. So it's, it's, they're now working as an independent track. So that is why we cannot use the, the uh, 3D container here. We must create our very own 3D container. Not sure why that happens. I didn't ask Boris and Boris didn't tell me. <laughs> but anyway, so there you go. So if you want to create it, first create your very own 3D container like the method I showed you. And then it's uh, just your imagination what you can create. So I hope this helped you out and I hope you can have lots of fun creating little objects within Corel Video Studio. And as always, thanks for watching.